Alright y'all, it's Gavin Powers, Pirates Talks, back in again with another video, and we are in Chicago, Illinois right now. Tried to get a little video for y'all earlier of us in South Carolina leaving, but I forgot. I got some clips we're going to show y'all here in a second of us driving to North Carolina, seeing some elk. So we're going to the Tinley Park in the RBC, going to head in for the setup day tomorrow, because we got the VIP access. Uh, hopefully going to see some cool folks there, see some cool animals, so we will, I'm going to play some B-roll in North Carolina, and we're going to get back to you guys when we get to the expo. Get elk out there in the field in North Carolina. Tell you. Yeah. Yeah, I see it. We got those in South Carolina. Where do you have? Are you from Tennessee? Because I want to. All right, y'all. We out here at Tilly Park Fish Center. Oh, don't point at the great point of the fish center. <laughs> uh, we out here at the convention center, about to walk into Tilly Park day one. I don't know if they let us buy stuff today. They might not be. They might be. Ain't too positive on that. I know we're gonna get me some other YouTubers here today. We're gonna see everybody set up. We're gonna see the animals. We're gonna get back to you guys as soon as we get inside. So without further ado, we're gonna get right into it. Uh, we're in the convention center. We're gonna go look at some cool What? All right, so we just picked up an Australian binos gecko. Now these guys, really interesting species because they're like a morning gecko. They are parthenogenic, which means they lay eggs without a male and the eggs are fertile and they'll hatch. So hopefully we're gonna get a breeding program for these guys going soon because you do not see them that often. Just got a really good deal on one. So yeah, gonna see what else we can find here today. We just got a Saracenorum gecko. Now these are like a lot like a crested gecko. They're very closely related. They can actually crossbreed. And uh, we just got picked up one. Very good deal. I and mean, they're like 400, 500 bucks in my local expo. So 150 for a, like a year old one. And they said, I mean, that's just a steal. I can't, you know, I'm not ever gonna do no better than that. So two geckos down, more to go. I have banana pectinatas, but they're gonna turn yellow when they're older. They're not gonna stay green. So they're gonna be even cooler looking as adults. Video. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like fan. What? We got snake discovery here, y'all. Yeah, those are those are a night and all, but they're a, like a weird variety of night and all. Okay. I love the bronze geckos. I love the bronze geckos. Leap and leeches. Bio Reptile Company. They've got the some gorgeous berms. I love that blizzard berm. It's gorgeous. Albino, pearl, hypo, gorgeous berms. Nice lychee on them. Cool. That is a that is a badass looking crested. That is a cool looking crested. Cool. That is that is a gorgeous animal. Look at look at this. Oh, okay. slide over. Sticker, guys. Oh, <laughs> that is stunning. That is a stunning animal. If our state didn't hate us, I'd have one. But our state hates us. Pretty roughneck monitor. We got Mike's monitors here. Big old like, oh, yeah. water. Yeah. Gorgeous stuff. It's gorgeous. All the cool geckos. Oh, look, those are like what I've got, the Chinese caves. Well, they've got the other cave gecko species too for 300. 300 a pair is not bad. <gasps> look, those are the ones that stick. Okay, so these, they shoot the sticky stuff out of their tail when a predator shows up. Look at the red anole. All the cool anoles. God, those are pretty. Look, there's Pecky, Pecky Dacklis Rangii. I just saw a guy on, on uh, Reddit the other day who just had one. Those are so cool, 475. That's 200 for a baby though. Oh, look at the baby tokays. Hey, tell Eris if she wants to get like a baby tokay to tame it out. That's probably her best bet. I don't bet. think she does. Oh yeah. Shell, so we're leaving the Tenley Park NARBC day one. We got the early access. Uh, going to go back to the hotel here in a minute. Show y'all what I bought. Uh, both dead and alive, so we're gonna get back to you guys when we get there. All right, y'all, so we're back from day one. Tinley Park, NARBC, only VIPs can show up because I'm cooler than everybody else. Um, all right, so who's going first? I mean, you can go first. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so first off, we got a Binos Gecko. I showed up just to get these guys, um, well, these gals, they're not guys. Now, there were several different color varieties. There, there's not more for sure localities or anything. It's just a uh, individual coloration. But you can see these guys. They don't get much bigger than this. I bought this one because it looks like a leopard, really small, dark spots. Where some of them have more splotches, some of them have more stripes. This is the coolest looking one. Um, now, what's cool about these guys? You might know I work with morning geckos, and just like morning geckos, these are a parthenogenic species. I would say they're all female. Everyone's gonna tell you they're all female. With morning geckos, like every one in like so many thousand can end up being a male. It's always sterile. There's no point in buying a male unless you have it from a collector standpoint because what's the point in buying a male to breed and they're all female and they breed by themselves. But these are just like that. 
Um, but they have less of a, t the breeder told me these have less of a tendency to eat their own babies and you can just incubate them in the tank. Whereas my mornings, you can do it too, but I take them out to separate them. But that's one of the main animals I showed to actually get. And it's actually the first one I got. Next up, saving the best for last. Okay, so I got this Sarasonorum. These people call them Sarah's geckos. Um, I bought a very low pattern one because I like the cryptic, like olive, olive brown and green. Now these are a super close. Dang it, I got a male. <laughs> okay, now he's gonna hang. Or he's gonna hang out there. Now Sarah's norm geckos. They normally have a norm. Normally they look a lot like my skunk geckos, which is usually called a white line gecko. But um, they have that little white stripe that'll go from here and go down their back. Sometimes they have spots in the back. That one was cheaper, and also I just liked it more. You didn't see it as often. So it looks like a crested gecko minus the crests. And these can actually crossbreed with the crested gecko, as far as I know, because I know you can cross in Chihuahua geckos with cresteds. These are closer to cresteds than Chihuahuas. So I'm about positive you could crossbreed that to a crested. So maybe produce hybrids later on down the line. I mean, it's not like you're messing up the crested gecko gene pool very much, but yeah. But knowing that's a male, that's actually kind of a good thing. So if I bought another Saras gecko, I could produce pure Saras. Which, I mean, we got tomorrow. I, I could pick up another Saras. You're going back to prison. Oh, okay, or throw a towel at him. That's what you get. You pooped in your bowl. That's why. It stinks in there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it does. <laughs> Why'd you smell it? No, I didn't want to. I wanted proof that it smelled. It smelled. Yeah. I don't remember who I bought. The, oh, I had their business card, but it's in my coat. That's in the. We have business cards. We'll show you all those at the end. But uh, I might pause the video and get my business cards and post those because uh, these are all their business cards. I left all mine in my jacket in the car. Okay, so those are down. Um, now this is a breeding pair of a species I used to work with, but I never bred them. Now, the reason I got these is because I was watching Wally from Supreme Gecko, really cool channel if you like geckos, by the way. I was watching him, and I saw all the morphs he worked. They had morphs there. I wasn't into getting the morphs, though. I just got these guys. And this is the one that they said should be a male, and looking at it, that's definitely a male. This one is looking at it almost 100% a female. The breeder told me it's about positive it's a female. But these are Periodura pictus, a.k.a. the pictus gecko, also called a panther gecko. Now, um... Just funny thing, I remember the first Tinley vlog I ever bought, I ever watched was Clinch Reptiles, and he bought a, a bunch of these. But what's cool about them is they're from Madagascar, which I mean, that's not the cool thing about them. But the cool thing about them is they can go in a very arid setup or a tropical setup. So I'm probably gonna keep these guys arid and keep them next to my banded thick toed geckos, my dune geckos, my leopards. Keep them next to those in that tank shelf. Uh, even though I prefer building tropical terrariums, it's more fun to do, the easy plants are easy to work with. But last time I had one in a tropical setup, I never saw him because he was always hiding the plants. He blended in too well. So keeping them on mostly sand, I think we had better luck with them. This guy, this was the male, right? Do you want me to take it up there, Chef? Uh, if you want to. He's chill. They can't, they don't have toe beds, so. But yeah, they, um, apparently they can float. I've been told they float on water. So I don't know if that's true or not, and we're not testing that out because I don't want to kill my, my geckos. But uh, apparently that's a fun fact. I don't know how fun it is, but it's a fact. Okay. Go. So are we gonna go over like my animals and y'all's animals, then we go after oddities afterwards? We or? can. I don't know if y'all just want to go all your stuff. Okay. So. Relax. Okay. You want to get back in your little tub, boy? Well, you doing this one last? Yeah, I'm doing him right now. I'm talking about for my animals right now. You should okay. like shout out my YouTube. Mm -hmm. What YouTube? Exactly. I can get. It. <laughs> no, you have no a YouTube? Videos yet. Oh, oh my goodness, his tail is now. Okay, I'll let oh, you have a shout know. out. I, that's, oh god. Okay, so this. This is what I came to Tinley for. It was either this or an Argus monitor. They had Argus, but they were just a little too old for what I wanted. Really, I wanted this guy from a show, like a, not a show standpoint, but from like an exhibitor standpoint. Got a little bit of stuck shit on his little footsies. But, um, okay, so this is a pectinata, Mexican spiny-tailed iguana. Now, they have a lot of localities. You have the pie pectinatas, which are the gorgeous black and white ones. I'm personally not as big of a fan of them as the banana pectinata, which is actually a cheaper locality. But what's cool is there's also an orange pectinata. Now, that is a cross of an orange and a banana pectinata. So I've been told, I've seen some pictures of adults of that cross. It's not a hybrid because it's a, it's a locality cross, not a subspecies cross. I've been told they can look anywhere from an in-between of the, or the orange ones are gorgeous. I'll pop up a picture right there of the orange ones and I'll pop a picture right there of the yellow ones. Um, I've been told they can look any, they can do one of two ways. Well, this is a male, but um, go one of two ways. They can either go in between the orange and the yellow in color or they can go orange with yellow flecks in them. And I just, that's what I'm hoping he looks like. The oranges are just gorgeous. They look like tigers. And this is a male, so he's gonna get these nice big spikes down his back. A lot tamer than a green iguana, a good bit smaller than a green iguana. This big spiny tail, if you look a little bit closer, there's all these spines on their tails, so they get the name Mexican spiny tailed iguana. 
course, they're from Mexico, Central America, places like that. They start out green. They're going to turn brownish green, olives, all these little patterns going on their back until eventually about a year and a half to two years, they turn their full adult coloration. Now, this guy's actually going to, going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt to get back in the cup. I did get a male. Usually when I get a new species that I'm iffy on breeding, I get a female just in case I do decide to breed. I've already got the one that's taking longer to get to sexual maturity. I've had it longer, so it takes me less time to breed, but I wanted a male just in case I decide not to breed these guys. From an exhibitor standpoint, from the standpoint of me wanting a really cool looking pet, I got a male just because he's gonna look cooler. I'm I'm probably 100% gonna get a female later on. Um, but yeah, they also had an albino form of this there. I'm probably gonna get a video of it tomorrow because I forgot to get a video of it today. The albinos were $20,000 each. It's a brand new project. And actually, not many people have actually made this cross. So if this cross gets really big and really popular, um, there's a good chance I got into it when it was still cheap and hope maybe I, I, mean, hell, I could make a lot of my money back on this. But yeah, super tame. This was the first male they pulled out and he was the one I wanted because he's got a little more pattern on him and he was the chunkiest one. So, But they're all captive bred. You don't really see these guys wild. You don't see the colored faces wild caught too much. But yeah, out of... Um, I can't remember. I know they were in Texas. They knew my buddy Tyler, so that's was pretty cool. But no, get back in there. They're near Houston, Texas. I'll show you their car at the end of the day. Or not end of the day, end of the video. When I go back in the car and get my stuff. Okay, so that is all for my table. Are y'all going next? Yeah. Okay, so we have these two. They are a breeder pair of albino hognose snakes. Um, here's the female. She is, I think she's five months old. And Here she is. And then we also got a male right here. Trade with me. We also got a male. He's around a year old, so he's a lot bigger. He shouldn't get too much bigger than this. But we got them as a breeder pair. And then we also bought... Where is it? We also bought a female gargoyle gecko to breed with our male we have at home. Oh, oh what is wrong with the Sarah? I love gargs because they look like dinosaurs. Like it looks like an actual raptor you can see in her eyes if it'll focus. And that's all the animals we got. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, show the isopods off, too. Yeah. I guess I should take her out. Oh, uh, yeah, you want to put the snakes up for this in case it bolts and they try to bite? Uh, no, I'm just only going to take one out. Okay, yeah, the baby. And then I'm going to start yapping. <laughs> shout out to your YouTube while you're at it. Um. I'll pop a picture of the, you're going to shout out a pop picture of your logo on there when editing. I don't have a logo. Oh, like your YouTube thumbnail. So they'll know what to look for. Hey. Is this the female? Uh, I'll just give it to you and you can put it in one to edit it. Okay. Because okay. he's I don't just full grown and she's still a baby. Okay, so I got two red sided garter snakes to hopefully um, breed in the future. It'll take about. <laughs> what? Are, what? They, they jumped they the same. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so it'll take probably about a year, two years to until I can actually breed these guys. Um, so I did get these. The thing about them is they'll get a lot brighter, as I said, shed. She's actually in blue right now, so she'll be way prettier than this in the next couple days when she actually sheds. Yep. And then also, while holding her, or actually, I here's the male. He's feisty, and I took him out. I hope this is getting it. Okay, yeah, he's feisty, and I took him out at the show, and he must everywhere. I could smell it. It was not a pleasant smell. And then I also got these dwarf. Let me make sure I can see these dwarf white isopods. So this is like out of camera. You're gonna have to edit this. Because their venom is meant to kill reptiles and amphibians. Here, I'm gonna make sure I get a good frame of this. Work with the hog up, whatever. Okay, there we go. It's like weirdly rubbery, like that. Okay, that's oh, so all that, for me, I guess. The female garter awesome. she got, the few red sided garters I've seen in person, that's in, in, even in shed, that's one of the prettiest female red sided garters I've ever seen. So that's going to be stunning as an adult. So maybe eventually down the line, whenever she breeds those, I could have some of the babies on the channel, hopefully. Yeah, uh, um, I did get this for a discounted kind of price because there's like, there's a something wrong with her um, scales right here. But honestly, within the next few uh, sheds, that should be gone. So. Yeah. The, the breeder said it wasn't, it, you could feel the back. It's not a kink or anything. It's probably a shedding or incubation issue, if anything. 
not something anything genetic, but if, if it is genetic, you'd notice within the first litter of babies, which I say litter, not clutch, because those lay live births, not that the guana's mad. They lay litters, not live births. So um, yeah, if anything is wrong, of course, obviously she would retire breeding them, but I mean, it's, I doubt it would be anything genetic, so I wouldn't worry about it. But yeah, so we're gonna go over oddities next. Mm -hmm. Not oddities, but I just have things on purpose. I used to say oddities, because that's what I thought was oddities. Then we're gonna go over stickers last. Or I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go over stickers and uh, cards last. I'm gonna put this little, oh, I'm gonna hold him. Okay, so, I was gonna throw him across the room, but I really need him later. Okay, so I bought this. This is the skull of a Munt Jack deer. I didn't ask if it was a European or a Northern Red Munt Jack, I'm not too sure. Uh, it was farm raised in America. Um, I'm actually working on permits to get these guys for the petting zoo because uh, South Carolina required, which we're not in South Carolina, we're in Chicago, Illinois right now for the Tinley Park. Uh, I mean, we know that, but um, still. Um, now, the Northern Red Munt, I'm just going to say Northern Red Munt Jack because I play a video game and that species is in the game, so that's what comes to mind. So I'm just going to say Northern Red Munt Jack instead of just Munt Jack. But uh, South Carolina, you need a permit to own cervids, which are any hoofed animals with antlers, so elk, deer, red deer, whatever you want to call them. Um, Moose, elk, stuff like that. I already said elk twice, but I don't care. Um, so yeah, these guys are super small species of deer. I mean, you can see it in my hand. I mean, our South Carolina white-tailed deer are some of the smallest white tail in the country, excluding Florida and excluding the coos deer, which is not a white-tailed deer. It's a subspecies of white-tailed deer. Um, we have some of the smallest in the country. And I mean, I, I mean, this is as big as like a small white-tailed doe for South Carolina. So just to give you, a, I mean, this this is good. This, this deer is as big as a medium-sized dog. And I know a lot of people have this pets. They actually make quite good pets. But like I said, because of the chronic wasting disease issue that's facing in America right now, which is a zombie deer disease, you might have known it as, it's very difficult to get these guys in South Carolina, but it can be done because I know people who have fallow deer, I know people who have farm range whitetail, hoping to get some of these guys for the petting zoo soon, hopefully to breed them. Um, but here's another cool thing about them. You can actually see right here, they have their nostril and the skull looks broken, but trust me, it is not. There's an extra little hole right here, an extra hole right here, and their face is a big indent right here. That's because I'm gonna pop up a picture of a live red munchak. The thing with them is they have like a second set of nostrils up here. I don't know if it's actually a set of nostrils. I don't know if it's made for uh, making sounds. I don't know if it's for sexual display. But um, all I know is it's pretty cool. But when they flare open, it looks weird. And uh, they're a really cool species. This is actually, I mean, uh, this is actually like a younger one. You see there's not many, it doesn't have many points on the antlers, but their antlers don't get big. So, I mean, it still looks like a younger deer. I did not ask, um, I, I did not ask if it was like a, just like a farm raised one that died because of the petting zoo that died, or if it was like one that was butchered, which I mean, I, I farm meat animals, so it's not like I'm, it's not like I'm against that happening. Uh, it only fell like a foot, so it'll be fine. Um, but yeah, we got that. And this, I'm just gonna bring this up with the camera. This is a preserved corn snake in a jar coming out of the egg. And of course you can see it has really bad kinking in its back. That is why the snake didn't make it. It might've been euthanized. I'm not too sure I didn't ask. Uh, it looks like a butter corn snake to me, which is the color morph, not a species or anything. But yeah, that's what it looks like to me as a butter corn. But of course it could just be a normal or something like that because it is um, preserved. And now I'm gonna assume this is alcohol and not formaldehyde. It could be formaldehyde. I don't know if formaldehyde gives it that yellow color sometimes. But um, yeah, it's a cool little corn snake in a jar because my mom said, do not come home with any snakes. I got this as a gag, as like a gag gift to say, oh yeah, I had to come home with a snake. Um, so yeah, put that down there. What else did I get? Nothing. Yeah, the toad, wherever he went. Shut up. <laughs> Go. Okay, is it order? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, so <laughs> we got a 3D printed hog nose keychain and then my mom has a pet raccoon, and she's obsessed with raccoons, so I found this little guy and got it for her. You wanna go show him? Yeah, thank you. If your mom dies, I'm taking the raccoon, by the way. So, yeah. If I actually didn't laugh at that, it makes me look like a serial killer. Thank <laughs> you. Oh, I thought you meant the keychain. No, 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 it's a live raccoon. I meant, I meant, I meant stinky. That's what they call him. Because he's really cool, he's really cool. So we got those, and then we got one of these. It's four coconut houses for five dollars yeah, which if anyone knows so, if you go to PetSmart one of those is five bucks at PetSmart one so. of those is ten dollars at PetSmart really? yes yeah, I just got, I, buy, I just buy, um, I, I like coconuts I just buy coconuts to come and have to make them myself we also got some food for this lady the gargoyle gecko we showed earlier we got her some Pangea food we also have this for our male because he refuses to eat the watermelon one that we originally had um then we got a pack of leaf litter and then me and Devin actually went on halfsies on this, and we got all this bark. And, and corn one just yeah. fell on the floor. Yeah, all this for $20. So, okay. And that's everything we got.
and a whole bunch of that just fell on the floor. Um, yeah, while the loser was flipping out in the cup, he actually did break his tail. So, yeah, that's not good, but I'll get it treated. Yeah, he, when he was flipping out a minute ago in the cup, he broke his tail. Oh. Yeah, that's not good. I'll get that figured out in a minute, but yeah. I'm gonna, we're gonna move him in one of those. So we're gonna take him out of the cups and move him in like a tub setup for we're here for the next three days. I'm gonna move him like a tub setup. So I'm gonna move him that so he doesn't hurt himself again. But you saw him flipping out. I don't know why he was flipping out, but he did. And he did unfortunately break his tail, but that's, they don't grow back like a gecko or like a, a something like an anole. I don't, I, anoles don't, I don't know if anoles grow, grow their tails or not. I think they do. Yeah, they might. I don't know. Maybe he does. Maybe maybe he doesn't. But if not, I mean, I mean, if he does end up not being friendly, which he should be, I mean, that's just one less thing to whip me with, I guess, because that's, <laughs> that's the only stuff the fence is whipping you with their tail. Jess, so did y'all go over all y'all stuff? Yeah. Right, your turn. Okay, so um, I will just put. Do not show them the dinosaur. Here, you want me to hold it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, I have this one. So I actually, of course, you heard she or we split the the cork bark in half. I got one of these, uh, one of the sets of four. I also got a bag of leaf litter, as you see here. And then, so the only two things that I got that you have not seen, I got this bamboo and then this big leaf litter. So that's all I have. <laughs> um, for the next... Oh wait, I forgot. We also got something else too. Uh, did y'all okay? So while y'all go over y'all stuff, I'm gonna go run to the car. I'm gonna put this guy in a tub setup and I'm gonna go get the other little. Or is the car unlocked? No, give me where's the key at so I can go unlock and grab my other business cards. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna go run and get the stuff, put this iguana in a tub. I'm gonna uh, figure out where I put the. Yeah. I'm gonna put the iguana in a tub for now. Get rid of the tub. Put it behind the skull. Do not put the. I'm gonna, I, I moved it. I moved it. It's out of the way. Do not put the tub. Do, do not worry, it was on the couch. I moved it. Okay. Swear, I'm gonna I'm gonna edit this video, so it's gonna get a board. Woo, excuse me. Where's my iguana? He's on your bed. This is the right last thing we head. got. He's so, on your right, left side. Where is it? You got a uh, so, gargoyle in the cognos, right? Yes. We recently moved in together and have our own animal room for all so of our hog noses and barks that we plan on breeding. So I found this woman who actually hand draws these pictures. Um, where and, is that? And um, Here, I'll show them. Yeah. We got them so that they semi look the same. <laughs> oh, there we go. Because now that we got two albinos, right? Mm -hmm. Um, this my one... My snake is kind of sticking out, too. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This, um, this picture doesn't look like the girl that we showed y'all, but this is exactly what our male looks like that we have at home. So, we got these, and we plan on framing them and putting them up. And now we just wait for Gavin. So, I'm sure he'll probably cut this video out to when we... We mix the tops. You yeah. silly goober. <laughs> I don't know if I should. How do we wait? Oh, hey now. I don't think I did it. Well, she's got mad at me for some reason. She probably got mad at him because she smells them. And they haven't been properly introduced. Okay. Oh, did y'all introduce the, the snakes? No, she's mad. Oh, okay. She just hissed. Did y'all go over y'all's business cards and all that? Uh, no, but we went over the pictures. Okay, right so we'll go over business cards last. Or did you go over all your stickers? Yes. Oh, well, not our stickers, no. Go over the stickers. Um, no, I'm going to take my mail out real quick. We okay, got the Morph fine. Market sticker. Y'all are going to watch someone get shit on in life. <laughs> this sticker, the Align Robinson art sticker, is actually oh. these two. And this one, correct? Uh, this one is also hers. It's called oh, Rocket so Red Geckos. So those two go with these paintings. And then... We got these stickers, but I didn't buy any geckos from. That's one of the coolest stickers you had. Of yeah. Time. This is one of the coolest stickers I've seen. Is that one? We we got these stickers from somebody, but we did not buy any geckos from them because they had they or not very geckos exotic snakes. Hog yes. Nose snakes. Yeah. They very... had three thousand dollar hognose snakes, and yeah. I was not putting three thousand dollars into a snake. Yeah. Yeah. So. So, since we kind of went out of order, I'm going to go over and show my stickers. Do business cards last. Okay, so, first up, you're crap behind here. We have a Bolin's Python sticker, and I'm actually hoping to get a Bolin's Python tattoo. Sorry, what? Sorry, y'all. A must on you? Okay, she I got, just got a whiff of something. Yeah, she just got must on by a garter snake. See, look, okay, so what's actually cool is the sticker shines like a rainbow, 
that is actually what Bolin's pythons are known for. They're a bigger snake. No, not quite as big as like a, as a berm or anything. Still a big snake, gorgeous snake. My favorite, my probably, I wouldn't say my favorite reptile. I do like Argus monitors. My favorite snake, 100%. They do have this coloration like a Brazilian rainbow boa. Pretty sure the scientific name is uh, uh, Python Bolini, but I know Kevin McCurley at Nerd breeds them. And let's just say they're fifteen thousand dollars, and when I saw them for twelve hundred or twelve thousand five hundred dollars, I thought that was dirt cheap. So that goes to show as to why I don't have one. I also got a little alligator sticker, and it's by the Adeline Robinson Art.com. It's a little thing right there. I'm pretty sure they've been on like Snake Discoveries uh, stuff. Actually, Emily from Snake Discovery was buying stuff from them. Um, they accidentally gave me two of them by accident. They gave me uh, one like because whenever I bought a sticker, they gave me out like, their logo sticker, and it was like that. And I didn't notice after I got back that it was two. So. I accidentally stole a sticker, my apologies for that. But yeah, that's what I bought. But here's one a good deal. So I mean, I got four stickers for five bucks. Um, I should've only gotten three. So my bad, Adeline, I'm assuming that's your name. My bad, I'm gonna go ahead and apologize for that. Um, we have, I don't okay. know what happened to our business cards for them, I'll find them later, but we have this business card for the Strong Over Creations and that's where we got the raccoon and the, okay, that's fine. That's where we got the raccoon and the hog nose. Was that you? Or? No. Was Both of these are hers. Mine. Was this mine? Who was this? Both of these are hers. I, the, I should only have one. Oh, this is y'all's. No, um, the top one is yours. Yeah, yours that's is the rat one. That's where you got your two hog yeah, The rat okay. one is both well, the rats on the yours. This is my hog nose yeah. one. It's for geckos, etc. For my so, two hoggies. Uh, are you done? Yeah. Yep. So I got my male uh, red-sided garter snake from, this is Hot Herps, I assume. And I got my female. I They did not have a business card, but I got it from Exotic Unlimited. So, yeah. Okay, so we're going to go over an order of... What about the cameos today? Who's all the famous people we saw? Oh, that's gonna be later. That's gonna be in the beginning of the video. Okay. Who's um who got from Geckos, etc.? Me. That. Oh, did you already went over it? Okay. So we're gonna go over this one first. I didn't buy from this guy. He was actually kind of sharing a booth with some guy I did buy from. But I got his business card because I know what he works with. He didn't have any of what I was really wanting for sale. So that's why I got his card. And I was actually like, I was like, oh, is this guy? Then I saw the animal he has on the business card. He specializes in different species of Goniosaurus. <laughs> Sorry. So cave geckos. So I have Chinese cave geckos. Um, but he has like Boanglagensis, Orientalis, species I don't even know exist. Gorgeous geckos, like bright orange with black stripes and just gorgeous, stunning eyes. He works with them, so Nightfall Exotics, uh, Emilio Hernandez, hit him up. That's going to be your go-to guy for really badass um, cave geckos. Now, um, who is this? I know who this is. I just got to make sure I did actually buy one. I'm pretty sure this is who I got my Saracenorum from. If I'm not, then I if it's not, then I apologize. It's somebody else's business card. But I mean, anyone who breeds what's on their I mean, it's gargoyle gecko on the logo, so I can't. I'm assuming I'm right. But anyone who breeds New Caledonians usually breeds <laughs> all the New Caledonians. I mean, there's a gargoyle right here. I mean, perfect timing. If you want to show off? But um, yeah. So if you work with one New Caledonian, you work with all the New Caledonians. But I'm telling you, um, Nimmers, Herps, um, what's Dwayne, Dwayne and Pam, um, Nimmer, uh. Okay, I'm, trying, I'm not going to get the phone number out, but you can see on the card, um, they uh, had the best prices I have ever seen on Saracenorums and on Chewy Geckos. And I'm telling you, those pri you will, I'm, I've never seen those prices before. I doubt you'll ever see those prices again. Hit them up if you want a really high quality animal, because that is a gorgeous animal. The ones that I really regret not picking up, and I might go in tomorrow and pick up, they're gorgeous animals. You cannot beat the prices they had, all breeding quality. Recommend them to the fullest. I love the gecko I got. I'm probably going to get more from them in the future. Um, this one next is actually Roots, Scoots, and Scales. Um, this is their logo. Their logo is uh, some kind of a gomid with a rubber ducky isopod. And they actually put on the back as to why I got them is the Pictus geckos. They had a melanistic. They had, um, what have they were called? Um, the, uh, they had a lot of Pictus gecko morphs. Let's just put it that way. Go I love Pictus geckos with all my heart. They had gorgeous morphs. Um, hit them up, uh, root scoots and scales, hit them up. They gorgeous pictus geckos, um, a lot of cool snakes and stuff too. Um, but I'm not as big of a snake person. They also had my one, uh, 
I could already use my favorite gecko species, and I don't know the scientific name of it. I just know it's called a frog-eyed gecko. They had those a little bit out of my price range, though, for good reason. I mean, all the ones I saw at Tinley Park were out of my price range as far as those cool geckos go. Now, this is um, South Tex Gex. So, South Texas, of course. Um, yep. Um, on Facebook, it would be Carl J. Vargas and South Tex Gex on Instagram. Uh, this is actually who I got my banana pectinata from. He had the $20,000 albino pectinatas. Um, he had it for it was a thousand dollars for sixty six percent het albinos, which is actually a pretty good deal if, if you would, uh, would break it down. Um, and it was two hundred and fifty for the bananas and the nothing and the and the oranges. So South Tex Gex, hit them up if you want quality banana pectinatas, yellow pectinatas. Believe he said he worked with pied pectinatas, standard Mexican spiny tails, so just a pectinata. Um, and the albinos, one of the only guys I know who works with the albinos because it's like a brand new project. And uh, I'm actually proud to say I have an animal that is bred by a guy who has such a high quality project going on. So, yeah, as far as I'm aware, that's all we bought today. Um, tomorrow, I'm probably going to do another video like this. Um, however, it's going to be a lot smaller because we've mostly got what we want. But I will tell you one thing. We got there super early. We weren't the first to the door or anything, but they had just opened like a couple minutes before we walked in. And we walked through, looked at everything. And it was as they're setting up, we ended up walking through the entire thing like four or five times because people kept putting stuff out. New booths kept popping up. Like I'm telling you, the, the booth where I got these two dead animals at, like the two uh, the Munch Jack and the Corn Snake, that booth wasn't even there until like we were already there for three hours. And all of a sudden they popped up. They had like human bones for sale, which I find it's crazy that you like don't even need a permit to have a human bone or anything. Uh, not even, you don't even need proof that it came from a legal source. You can just have one. So that's pretty cool, I guess. Um, but yeah, a lot of oddity shops popped up and all that. And then like, you'd go through one booth and this guy would have like, 50 ball pythons and you'd go back through and then the guy would have like a freaking uh, anacondas on the table like 30 minutes later that's how uh setup was hopefully tomorrow when we go in everything's gonna be a lot more structured everything's gonna be a lot more what was that what oh it was the zipper okay everything's gonna be a lot more set up everything's gonna be a lot more easy to look at we can only do one swoop because we're actually hoping to go to chicago reptiles tomorrow which is brian potter the man, the myth, the legend, who owns the Tinley Park NARBC, which and he doesn't own the Convention Center. He owns the NARBC. The, um, he owns the NARBC. He's doing the auction tomorrow. Um, that's his reptile shop. So really excited to go see that. That's going to be its own video. Going to go there tomorrow, pick up some supplies for the animals, and uh, just do a quick tour because they also sell reptiles there. And hey, they might have stuff that the Tinley Park Expo didn't even have. So, anyways, guys, that's going to be all for this video. If you liked, if, if you, okay, if you like this video, make sure. If, if you enjoyed this video, <laughs> make sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Peace.